Hi everyone, and welcome back to Math 301. Today we're going to talk about the chromatic number and chromatic polynomial. Start by looking at this example of the bow tie graph. Imagine you're putting sequins on this graph, and you would like to make sure that at each vertex you are putting a colored sequin, but you don't want any two vertices that are sharing an edge, so that are adjacent, to be the same color. So for example, if I wanted to make um, this one pink, then none of the others could be pink because all the others are adjacent to that center vertex. But I could make uh, this one red and this one red, and then I could make this one purple and this one purple. And so we're going to say that we need three colors in order to do this for this graph. And so uh, we will define the chromatic number to be three. So what's the definition? If G is a graph, the chromatic number of G Uh, is the smallest number of colors needed to color the vertices of the graph such that um, any pair of adjacent vertices, meaning that the two vertices share an edge are different colors. Okay. There's also a, an edge color number and that's a little bit similar, but where instead you color the edges and you want all the edges coming into a vertex to be different colors. So here, if we're coloring the edges here, once we make this edge green, well then this one could also be green, but none of these others could be green. And we could make it uh, slightly different shade of green for this one and a slightly different shade of this for this one. This one at least could be used again over here. And then uh, maybe we'll use blue for this, this one. Okay. So in this, for this particular graph, the edge color number is four. So what's the definition of that? I'm not sure this is the technical term, but the edge color number of G is the smallest number of colors uh, needed to color the edges of a graph such that all the edges attached to a vertex are different colors. And okay, let's just call this chromatic number C and this edge number uh, epsilon a few things you can notice, the chromatic number is always definitely going to be less than or equal to the number of vertices because you can always color uh, every single vertex a different color. And another thing you can say is that this edge color number has to be at least the maximum degree of a vertex. For instance, here we have four edges coming into this vertex. So this is the one of maximal degree. 
And if they all have to be different colors, that means we're gonna need at least four colors. And then this is less than or equal to the number of edges because you can always color each edge a different color. Okay, so, uh, so these are two numbers and here's one application that you might use the chromatic number for. Let's say each vertex represents a different job and an edge between them represents the fact that those two jobs cannot be done at the same time. Then you could ask how many people do you need to hire in order to do all the jobs? And for instance, in this situation where you had five jobs with these um, conflicts between them, then you would need three people in order to do, to do all the jobs. Okay, so let's just do some examples of these um, chromatic numbers. So uh, one thing is that if you look at a complete graph on n vertices, then every edge, every vertex is connected to every other. So every pair of two vertices are adjacent. And so uh, every vertex has to be a different color than all the others. So this chromatic number is going to be n. So we will just draw the example of k3. Well, maybe we'll do k4. Well, let's do, okay, let's do k4. So then since all these vertices are adjacent to each other, they would all need to be a, a, different, a different color. What would be the opposite extreme? Is there any situation in which you would only need one color? Well, it turns out if you look at the, the empty graph on n vertices, that's the one that has no edges, then, then the chromatic number is just gonna be one. Because if you have no edges, then you have no connections or conflicts between any of the vertices. And so in that case, they can all be the same color. Another thing that you can see is for a bipartite graph, uh, the chromatic number is two. In fact, it's an implication both ways. If you have a, um, so let's see, if you have a bipartite graph, you can make all the edges on the left be one color and all the edges on the right be another color. And that shows that the chromatic number is at most two. I guess it would be possible to have an empty bipartite graph. So I'll say, um, if uh, unless uh, it's um, there are no edges, in which case C would be one. Uh, conversely, if the chromatic number is two, that means that you can color all the you know a bunch of the vertices pink and a bunch of the vertices green, and none of the pink edges, none of the pink vertices. I think I said that wrong. You can color, color a bunch of the vertices pink and a bunch of the vertices green, and there's no edge connecting any two pink vertices and no edge connecting any two green vertices. And so that then gives it the structure of a bipartite graph. Okay. So there's something a little bit more that you could say here, which is about what happens if you have more than that many colors. So let's go back to 
this bow tie graph here. And let's say that we're lucky in that we have our colors for the five vertices. Then you might ask how many ways can you assign colors to vertices? So how many ways can you color the vertices such that no two adjacent vertices are the same color? So we definitely couldn't do this with two colors. If R is two, then the number of ways would be zero. Let's uh, just check this out. Well, let's start by saying, let's label the vertices. V1 through V5. And let's think about V1 first. And here we have our choices because we could use any one of the colors at that first spot. Then let's look at V2. It can't be the same color as V1. So we have R minus one choices. The same is true for V4. And then let's look at V3. Now this can't be the same color as V1 or V2. So we have R minus two choices. And the same is true for V5. So altogether we have R times R minus one times R minus one times R minus two times R minus two ways. And this is called the chromatic polynomial. It tells you a lot of cool things. If you know the chromatic polynomial of the graph, it tells you a lot of information about the graph. First of all, the degree of this polynomial is always the number of vertices. So in this case, this is a, this is a polynomial in R and it has degree five in R. Notice also that it tells you that we, we can't do this with just one color or with two colors, because if we plug in R equals one or R equals two, we're gonna get zero ways. And there's some other things that you can find out about the meaning of the coefficients of this polynomial gives you other information about the graph. So, okay, um, chromatic polynomials are, are pretty cool and it's worth looking into if you wanna look it up, look it up on the web. All right, see you next time.